announce that. Uh, so welcome, everyone. This is the uh, a monthly general meeting for the uh, Hyperledger Media and Entertainment Special Interest Group. And uh, today we have a, um, an exciting opportunity to uh, start developing a roundtable for the uh, blockchain AI. Um, Randy is going to has put some information in the uh, chat for uh, there's some housekeeping. Andy, just Randy, just do you just want to let us know what uh, what's in the chat there? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending. I'm just loading in the um, code of conduct uh, in the chat, and you're welcome to um, go and view our code of conduct, conduct as well as our antitrust statement. And I'm going to load that in right now. And I will also load in our um, LinkedIn um, link so that you can um, stay in touch and we can stay in touch with you um, as we have new things um, being developed. And, um, and, that, and also you can find us on Discord. So thank you again for attending. And thank you to all of our um, round table participants. Thank Back you, Randy. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Karen Kilroy and Ethan Cool, welcome. And uh, we have, we're tasked today with, uh, with uh, building something that I think is going to be uh, very helpful. And that is our uh, uh, entertainment industry blockchain and AI round table. I, 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 I have some ideas. Uh, we all have some ideas on how this should be structured. But today, what I'd like to do is just kind of formalize those ideas, talk about who we should target to bring on board, how we should go about. Randy's going to take some notes and develop sort of a uh, framework for this, and then we can publish it and follow up at another meeting, whether it be our next uh, monthly meeting or we start a set a, a series of uh, separate meetings outside of our general meeting group. So, um, Karen, you're the uh, the resident AI and blockchain expert. Uh, yeah. I'm going to propose that uh, that and vote you. I'm going to cast the first vote for either yourself or Ethan to be the moderator of this uh, of this roundtable. Tell me what your thoughts are on that and whether. Uh, whether you're you're up for the task, which I know you are, but are you? Go ahead. <laughs> well, we would. There's only one way to find out. It's like uh, the first time I steered a uh, rowing shell at nighttime. Uh, the the uh, coach said, "Who's an experienced cox coxswain?" And I said, "Well, I've done it once." And he said, "Well, then that makes you experienced." There you go. <laughs> I think I think you have a little more experience so, in AI no. and blockchain than just once. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm willing to give anything a go, you know. <laughs> I actually have moderated before. I moderated a um a discussion that was for uh it was the Australia House uh blockchain uh uh panel at South by Southwest, and that was really a lot of fun. Well, maybe you can bring some of that experience to our uh, to our newfound roundtable. Ethan, what are, <laughs> what, are your, what are your thoughts on having uh, Karen as our fear, fearless leader here uh, for the new blockchain AI roundtable? Are your are, is your vote in favor of that, yeah. or do you want do you want to tell me offline? No, I wouldn't have it other. I wouldn't have it any other way. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Well, uh, Randy, you have your first note to take. Our official moderator is uh, is Karen Kilroy. So that's uh, we have a good start. Uh, yes, Karen, we do. thank you, Karen. Stay on topic here, Karen. With your uh, awesome. tell us a bit more about what you were doing with South by Southwest and uh, what did you learn from that experience. Uh, as a moderator, and and tell us a bit more about the blockchain, uh, uh, the, the 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 venue that uh, you were in with South by Southwest. Go ahead. Um, sure. Uh, South by Southwest was was in Austin, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, this was pre-pandemic. 
um, uh, uh, I can't remember what year it was we started doing that. I think probably 2019 was when uh, Australia House had their had their blockchain panel, and I got asked to moderate it. And uh, and it was interesting uh, hearing the different points of view and and coming up with something that you know uh, would would keep the conversation flowing. We had a packed house. It was in a in Austin, they uh, clear out uh, bars and restaurants for South by Southwest and, and they make them into venues. And we had the entire venue plus the patio uh, where they had screens and speakers uh, on that topic of blockchain uh, from at Australia House. That was really fun. Um, but since then, I've had a, a, a blockchain panel at South by Southwest almost every year uh save uh i think there was one year i didn't we we did ours for the uh on the pandemic they uh, canceled south by southwest but we actually had recorded our uh panel exactly the time that we would have had it so it was interesting um but uh but moving on, uh, you know, now I'm working with Ethan. I'm here in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Ethan and I have an event coming up too uh, uh, that is um, at uh, the Northwest Arkansas Tech Conference, and that's at the end of the month. Uh, and then we also uh, are we've applied for South by Southwest Panel Picker, and uh, and South by Southwest Panel Picker is um, the they should be announcing it soon, but. The, our topic is going to be exactly what we're talking about here: how to take, um, how to make uh, AI um, accountable, and not leave people in the dust while big companies just make lots of money off of our knowledge and move on without us. And I you know there's no reason for it because they're going to make a lot of money. Uh, so that, you know, the and then plus two, you know, the other side of that coin is certain companies are going to want to show that they are responsible and that they pay people fairly. And and so by providing standards for that and trust logos, uh, we're going to be able to then, um, you know, help those companies as well stand out from their uh, from their less responsible competition. And uh, yeah, so can I um, can I just can I just sure. jump in for a second? I'm, I I love where you're where you're taking this, Karen and and uh, Randy. Can you just make a quick note? Uh, uh, you said trust logo. Uh, can you, Randy, just note that trust logo the idea, the concept of trust logo. I, I have to. This is so important because, and this is our goal. A trust logo, I'm assuming you mean like an ISO type of standard, where if you've been certified as ISO, then you recognize and you've been trained to understand your responsibilities under the ISO standard. So this trust logo idea is this, this sort of thing. I see you shaking your head, Ethan. Is this, uh, am I on the right track here? Yes, and we're fortunate enough uh, to be able to hook on to a train that's already left the station, uh, which is C2PA and uh, the Content Authenticity Initiative. Um, if I could share my screen for a moment, I'd like you, to show you their new website, which I think is really exciting. You should be able uh, to see it, right? All right? Yeah, let me share that window. There we go. Okay, can you see? Yeah, I can see. Yes, I can. Okay, so this is the new uh, content uh, credentials site as produced by the Content Authenticity Initiative, which is part of C2PA, which is a, a roll up of Adobe, Microsoft, New York Times, BBC, Sony and other uh, companies and uh, the nonprofit that Ethan and I run, uh, Friends of Justin, we are also contributing members to this. So rather than reinvent the wheel, um, a really good thing to do would be to participate with this group and follow their uh, meticulous standards. Um, their, their work is all really well done. They've got uh, the top people in the world working on it and they're accessible. Um, I don't know what more 
you know, we could ask for. And so in this case, let me tell you how this is the, the demo that they're giving here. And then I'll actually show you a demo of how it works. Um, we've got a, an image and they're showing here that this logo can appear in the corner and, and it provides content credentials. And so there's content claims um, and it helps you build trust in what you're seeing online. You click the content claim and then you can inspect the image. And the inspect is going to actually launch the content uh, credentials.org verify site. And the verifier lets you see the history of that file and where it, where it came from. Like in this case, this image was generated with an AI tool. Um, it was uh, uh, it was done with Adobe Firefly 1.0. Um, then they, you know, they have even more details in here and, and then, uh, then they give information about who issued the credential and when now you can go on and you can put all different kinds of claims and information in here. And one of the main ways that they're heading with this, and, and I'll stop and take a breath after I say this part is where it can be used and who to pay. So uh, that I will uh, stop for a moment and open that back up for discussion. Is this, uh, now we, and we discussed this in our meeting, we are in the meeting you and I had Karen uh, a few weeks ago. I mean, I love this, this is, this is phenomenal, but is, is this currently in production being used by, okay. So who's using this particular product, the CR content credentials product? Is it free? Is it a is it open source? Is it it's okay? It's free. It's free and it's open source. And the engineers are accessible. You can ask them questions. And you can also, once you if you join, you you have access to their discussions. Like it's it's as it's as transparent as can be. Um, they have some blockchain integration already with uh, MetaMask and one other wallet, but that was designed several years ago for NFTs. So there's no reason like a blockchain integration couldn't be done with Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, and, and if I may for a minute, I'm going to stop this share and I'm going to go into Adobe Photoshop and show you how mainstream this is. So if I, uh, let me, uh, it's going to take me a second here to find my Adobe. Hold on. Okay, Photoshop 2024. And this is something that you have to turn on in the preferences. I think it doesn't do it automatically. And as soon as Photoshop comes up, I will share it. That really cuts your bandwidth down and your, your internet connection slow. So we can really feel that. Karen, your looks that like you're sad, you're freezing huh? up a bit. Yeah. Can you see Photoshop? Let uh, me turn we, off my camera. Yes. Do yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So I see uh Photoshop. Yes, I see your files. I see Lightroom photos, you're highlighted. That's you. Okay. So now you're in your 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 Mac browser. Okay. You should see a figure eight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That's a Photoshop file. Now I'm going to export it. Copyright and contact info is one thing, but then publish to content credentials cloud. So let's put all that. And then we export. Uh, let's see, where is it going to go? Export. <coughs> Downloads. Hyperledger 1. Okay, so now let me exit Photoshop. Okay, now I should be back to better bandwidth now. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, so now I'll go into the verifier and I'll share that. Okay, let me go into the verifier. Share. And I'm going to get pull the file in that we just now made. Okay, see the little figure eight guy? So I'm going to pull that. Not yet. Okay. Can you there see it go. now? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So now here you can see this is just straight out of Photoshop, right? All I did was click something produced right. by Karen Kilroy. There's my LinkedIn account, um, which I could also get my LinkedIn verified with clear. And then I'm official on LinkedIn, even that that's, you know, they can go to LinkedIn and see that my identity has actually been <clears throat> verified. Um, you can also verify on LinkedIn through your own company. Um, you know, if you're, if you work for a big place. Um, okay. And then here it tells you what I use Photoshop, whatever that version is that I created a new file or content. And that I used other tools like pencils, brushes, erasers, which is exactly what I did. My, this certificate was issued by Adobe. And then here's when it was issued. Now we can issue our own uh, content credentials by building this process into any program. And then we can connect those contact, content credentials on blockchain. Up here where it said, uh, where it had social media accounts, this is where it would connect with MetaMask. If we were using MetaMask to say, uh, here's an address where you can, uh, I don't know what you would do with that address. It wasn't really clear the way they were using it. Um, but uh, I would think that, you know, with, with Hyperledger Fabric, we could put the verification right in here, you know, as one of these claims and say, here is the hash. Here is the ability to verify this on blockchain. Because they already hash uh, the image. They already take the fingerprint and then the next step is only to put that fingerprint then on blockchain, you know, and that helps. So, and actually it's interesting. One of the recommendations to locate uh, images that you can't find anymore is to search on the hash. Like if it lost its credentials, you could supposedly hook it back up with its credentials by searching on its fingerprint. Right, right. So there you go. <laughs> so it seems like we really fit into this because these are very free form, uh, the assertions uh, that you can make, uh, like these are assertions here that's saying, here's what happened. But these assertions could be anything. It could be um, actor went into studio and, and did body scan, um, <laughs> you know, actor signed off on on body scan um you know uh account payment account was set up you know restrictions here's the restrictions on using this data to train something else karen can you pull up that one of those images that you said was created by ai i'd like to see some of the metadata down on the right side here that's sure. uh uh so can you oh microsoft is another one too by the way uh, you can go to Bing AI and have it create an image and then pull it in here and see the credentials. Oh, with Bing? Yeah. Can that be done with chat GPT or any of them or is it just Bing? I haven't tried uh, chat GPT. Okay. Um, are, they using, are they using IPFS with this? Does anybody know? Are they, uh, is that, no? Okay. I don't think so. I like haven't heard that. So the the, they, the the cloud storage for this, this is free? I mean, this is, or is it, you do you have to have a paid account with- uh, It's free. Adobe, uh, so their Adobe cloud storage for this for content credentials is, is free. Wow, that's crazy. It's, it's, it doesn't actually take the image anywhere, I don't think. Uh, uh, and uh, it, I think it operates like it keeps the image in the browser and sends- send something up. I, I'm not 100% sure exactly how that part mm -hmm. works. I haven't you know, been able to see the code in the verifier. I haven't gotten okay. that far. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. 
but uh yeah from what i understand it sends up the manifest itself the manifest uh, yeah so everything you're seeing on the right side of the screen that's what's actually going into the cloud um so it's a really lightweight file you know yeah. it's probably why why it's okay. free yep yeah. is there a hash in that manifest or is that just uh yeah, there's yes. a hash in there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Randy, I think this is a good candidate for uh, one of your note taking content credentials application. The content credentials, I think, is good. I I um I like this. I like the uh I like how this uh uh I, I can see this exactly as you're saying, Karen, working with, with our with our round table. I mean, I can see it as being part of that. I wonder who else is and what else is being developed along these lines here? I also see um, this. I wonder if, if uh, one day, once we get our roundtable going, if we can't bring it to the uh, the, uh, the the software group for the uh, it's a it's a it's a uh, uh, it's under the hyperledger umbrella. It's under the and I'm um, you know what I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, but I'll pull it up. Um, I want to show you, I'm going to share my screen. If you could uh, stop sharing the screen there, Karen. Sure. Before I do, Brett, could yeah, you go take ahead. a look at this? Because you asked me to pull this up. This oh, is yes, a I'm sorry. Yes, AI yes, yes. generated image. And it shows you just what it created using a style reference image. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So it says right there, AI tool use. So it doesn't, okay, that's really crazy. That is really good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then it'll also uh, find similar images, and you can set up parent images. So, like if I if I set this up and then I pulled, I changed it, I could uh, then uh, set the content credentials to show that this is the parent image when anyone searches for it. So, like if I put stars behind them, and then you know, uh, and then set this one with with blank background as the parent, it would show the tree of evolution of how the image evolved and give oh, all yeah, the credentials. Wow. No Click kidding. On. Yeah. Yep. But that, but that is, so that is, um, okay, so I have a question. What is the, so the parent image, someone, so if, if a third party, someone other than the creator uses that image, their work is going to be on top of this as well is that so uh yeah you're, you're gonna see you're gonna see the creator's image and then you're gonna see your work and that's gonna show up in the yes. in in the uh in the file in the holder in the folder that has this file is that correct yeah yeah there's ways to to wipe it out you know like it's if you use something that doesn't support the standard and to modify it and resave it it's gonna just erase all your all your metadata but if you, um, and also too, I think it depends because it also has the ability, as long as the manifest is in the cloud, like Ethan was saying, it can search on the fingerprint. So like, let's do search for possible matches. I don't think it's going to find anything on this one. Yeah, that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty unique image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to find anything on that one. But if it was one like their sample, it brings up all kinds of them. Like, let's see if I can try to find their sample. Mm. I've been experimenting so much, I'm not sure which one's worked. Yeah, here you go. Here's one I signed with my own. With the with our own nonprofit that Ethan and I have, Friends of Justin, with our own X.509. And this is their sample file though that they give with the code. So if I search for uh similar files, it's gonna come up with a lot of them. Oh, it came up with other. So it's gonna it's it's gonna come up with a lot of them, and they're not all gonna be mine. Mm -hmm. But here uh, you can oh, see. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, other yeah. Wow. People that issued credentials for the, and then here this one's got Web three addresses. I'm glad we looked at that one. 
So they would have been, they would have been, so, so this would be an NFT. Someone created an NFT with this. Is that a I fair think assumption? So, probably. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a fair yeah. assumption. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. As a test. But see, so you yeah. can see where it came from. Mm -hmm. Here's a different one. They put a Web3 address too. Different Web3 addresses. Yeah. Tells what they did. Imported pre-existing content. So the only way to when you when you see that in the meta in the manifest in the site are those links clickable to the will it open a wallet or a, a browser? Uh, I don't explorer? think so, or maybe it, they were if you have yeah. it installed. I think co oh it copies. Okay, copy. it. okay. so you can so can you open a uh, open up a uh, blockchain browser on your uh, or an explorer? Just go to I don't uh, really have go to blockchain. To do that. Just go to blockchain.com. Just go to blockchain.com and you should be, you should uh, just go to the Explorer there. Explorer, uh, you see in the middle there? Oh, okay. Hit, there you go. Hit that and then uh, paste that address at the top. See, it says search, just paste it right there. There you go. Okay. I did and not do a search. That. Blockchain. There it is right there. That's the transaction. Click on that. We should see some uh, when it was. Uh, there you go. Where's the summary? When was it? Okay, so someone could contribute money that way. No, this well, this is a this is a uh, this should give us more. This is the NFT, but it should give us some more metadata on here about when it was created and. Uh, so this is. Uh, Hmm, interesting. I mean, somebody probably just did this as a test because that's a test graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see what what they, they well they would have to put a uh, okay. So there's these are derivatives of that PST one, correct? There, there we go. What was that? Yeah. Uh, go back in your screen one. There. So there what are is the people that did this? So, so this so is Tony Regato went into Photoshop change something and save the sample file and and on April 7th and then put it in this verifier to test it. I don't even know if he would have to have it in the verifier. He would just have to have the check mark that said save it in the cloud. It probably works for Adobe. Right, right. Good point. This is their sample person, Joe Bloggs, that they have in the manifest. So this, somebody signed it with their own certificate that might be a test certificate. And then uh, I think it is the test certificate. So right. this is just somebody signed it on November 17th using their test certificate. But then I signed it with uh, NoBot's claim generator, which is what we call our, our uh, claims generator. And it's issued by Friends of Justin. That's actually a real certificate that we purchased through Global Sign. So the uh, claims generator, is that specific to... Adobe here? No. Is that no? The generator uh, can be uh, built by anybody. Um, it, it's uh, there's a whole uh, open source toolkits that you can download, and uh, and you can um, build the pieces that um, that will be able to. Uh, there's something called C2PA tool, and then there's also a Rust implementation of it we talked um, about that i remember that now. yes 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 there's okay. a javascript and a rust implementation of it so using either right. one of those toolkits uh people can implement this now into their own um into their own process into their own uh like you saw the two ways that they're using it like one is to uh, say, okay, a person made this and here's to prove that a person did this. And then another way was here's to prove that an AI did this. And then there's also a meld that here's to prove that an AI and a person both did this and here's how it went down. This is the claims generator you're talking about. Yeah. The whole so, the, content. so, so the, the claims generator is going to be a tool that we're going to use to develop our product, the end user, in fact, our the client would use 
the claims generator. We have to start with that, correct? If we're going to help a company, an actor, a musician, a film producer, we need to start somewhere. And that would be one of those places would be the claims generator. Is that a fair assessment? I think it's an excellent place to start because the, it's it's uh, blockchain ready. You know, they so, coined so it. So Randy, throw that ready. claims generator. That's a... Uh, that's one of our notes we want to throw on there. So that's uh, that's really good. Let me um, let me share my screen here. I just want to uh, because we do okay. have a few things to talk about. I want to I want to just quickly show you something that uh, uh, that um, let me uh, first of all get it. We have um, I had a meeting with uh, a discussion with uh, Hyperledger. And uh, we are uh, um, we are um, we are interested in, uh, or we're, we are talking about. Uh, we had a discussion about a roundtable in the music industry, and um, actually, I'm not going to share my screen. And I'm going to talk about this just briefly, but this is a this is a uh, an opportunity that that I think is going to sort of dovetail with what we're doing, and I think that we're going to be able to ride this wave as well. And that is a large percentage of developers in the software industry are into music, and Hyperledger did a poll. Excuse me. And the poll was found that 58% of Hyperledger devs play a musical instrument. Wow. And, and that doesn't surprise me. And 30, 31% play regularly. So between 63, and I'm reading just some stats here, between 63 and 88% of software developers listen to music at work, at least some of the time, often when writing code or doing repetitive tasks. Silicon Valley tech titans are also rock stars. So the, the, the idea here, <laughs> and, and in our discussion uh, I had late, uh, last week, there is some there is big interest in Hyperledger music um, developing some type of collaboration in the music industry and building blockchain uh, and attracting blockchain coders to the music industry, specifically uh, using code to uh, uh, develop music, using not so much from an AI perspective, but not not so much from a from a an entertainment law perspective, but in in many ways, getting the people that are using that are developing software that love music to start looking at Hyperledger as being the go-to chain for music this is just one side of it so oh, yeah I, I wanted to bring that to your attention to let you know that that there's some bigger things happening uh within hyperledger um and so one of the things that that uh they're talking about uh if hyperledger foundation had a song theme or soundtrack what would it be so now we're, ta <laughs> now, now we're talking about doing a competition uh, yeah. And the winners would be judged by our community, the Hyperledger community. And the winners, uh, there would be a, a, an industry event that the winners, these are musicians. We can find them in the, in the industry. Um, creating music, performing music, and then uh, the winners of a, a competition would play at a leading industry blockchain event. So, so some really fun and exciting wow. things that, uh, that we're talking about here. So we're looking at things like history of music and coding, uh, creative correlations in music and coding, examples of music, music and coding, the emerging of tech, um, and then uh, graduating into the whole Hyperledger and where Hyperledger stands in, in music. So that this plays into what we're doing. And uh, um, so I wanted to get you guys excited about the fact that you know this is something that that uh, we're looking at doing, and it's uh, 
it means that uh, it means it, it, Hyperledge is very, very excited about getting involved in, in, uh, I was just reading the thing was off screen there. So, but yeah, this is a, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have some great opportunity. We're not there yet, but we've got some great, we've got some roadmaps being built by people other than us uh, within our, within the umbrella of Hyperledger. So, so it's all, it's all really uh -huh. good stuff. So look, Ethan, let's, um, what do you think? Ethan, sorry, <laughs> you've been, excited. you've been, you've been sitting there nice and quiet. Go ahead. You got the floor for a bit. Tell us your I thoughts. I bet he's excited now. He loves me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I, that competition sounds perfect um, for, you know, getting, getting this implementation out there, you know, all the musicians would be able to say, Hey, I created this music. And that's, that's really for us, this whole thing started with the mindset of how do we protect artists from the AI revolution and how do we make sure that they get paid for any work that they're creating? And so I think it fits perfectly into, into our mission. Um, and, uh, you know, additionally, um, I think, you know, what we've been thinking a lot about recently is, is AI data economies. How do we create a safe way for people to get paid for any data that they create that may be ingested by, by um, during AI training? And so this is, um, you know, especially for entertainment the entertainment industry, we, we, we've been seeing a huge use, use case there with SAG-AFRA and with the writers uh, going on strike. And one of the key points being, we want to make sure that our work is uh, protected or, um, you know, that we don't have to use AI in our work. And uh, I think what was super interesting also was the fact that uh, recently SAG-AFRA was saying that they were going to that they were backing out of negotiations because they were seeing that studios were just going to force actors to sign waivers on AI um, and, and using their likeness in future AI generated content. Um, so, um, you know, I just think there's a, a huge landscape out there for, for uh, both, uh, you know, these credentials that assert that this is the data that I've created or this is my likeness plus the ability to use a blockchain to uh, securely transmit any transactions that may happen, you know, writing a smart contract around their data so that they're able to uh, ensure that they get paid fairly for, for the use of that data. But that's really, you know, from our, from my perspective, at least where, where I really see a lot of this kind of tying in together is, uh, creating a, a sustainable AI data economy um, for any kind of creative in the entertainment industry. I like the buzz in that, uh, that Ethan just said, a, the creative AI economy. Were those the words that you used, Ethan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Randy, Randy, can you just make a point of that? The creative AI economy. And that's an economy that needs to be properly uh, uh, identified and properly addressed and properly distributed mm -hmm. and inefficiently distributed. And, and your th that whole concept of using smart contracts, if we can identify that participant's piece of data that they contributed and if a smart contract properly distributes the, uh, uh, well, use the word payment, mm -hmm. an agreed upon payment for that piece of data, then uh, that is a that is uh, contributing to the economy of the, the entire industry fairly and you know equally. Mm -hmm. So this is something that. Our round, round table, which you, Karen, will moderate, is going to talk about. We're going to find ways. So I think it's, uh, you know, we've got about 15, uh, 18 minutes here. We should talk about who we need to pull together from what 
industry, what industries and industry sectors to uh, join this roundtable and accompany us on this journey. We have obviously people here that are ready and are going to participate, all four of us. I know Randy had told me and expressed interest before that she would like to play a role in this. Did, did I get that, Randy, from you before? That yes, like that's to, correct. And, and definitely uh, your participation is is uh, is welcome and, and warranted. Um, Thank you. We need to think about who, and we can't have too many people. I see... Um, I see uh, uh, participants from the uh, 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 various blockchain communities that would have interest in this, at least somebody from that, that on the coding side, on the technical side of things. And that may not be someone initially from the technical coding side, but it could be someone from the community side of certain uh, blockchain communities that would participate with us. Go ahead, Karen. I have a thought. Um, okay, so this is a big one. Um, the University of Arkansas, where I'm a student, I'm a music student in the music program. Uh, and so there I'm a, like a an example of your crossover there. Um, but they just announced on Friday that they have a program that is an integration of data analytics and music. And they also have one of the only blockchain institutes in the world uh, at the University of Arkansas. And so I think that it's a, it's, it's just a perfect opportunity to get, uh, um, to marry that up people who need what we're doing and can understand it and can help us push it forward um, and actually give us a physical place. Ethan and I have a, a, uh, an office uh, that is complimentary from University of Arkansas. So they're helping us, um, their entrepreneurship program. Um, and uh, so it would be, um, I think that it, you know, we have a lot of doors that are open. I've already asked my instructor, I started there after I read this article on Friday, but if I could share it for a second, do you yeah, mind if I share the article? Absolutely, no, no, go okay. ahead. So give me a second here, I have to find it. Uh, hold on. Um, while Karen is looking for the article, I just wanted to add, I, I just think it's very important that we um, keep it um, where um, we attract those that don't necessarily have the resources um, that can come in, um, be able to have an opportunity to come in and um, share their creative what in music in in terms of this case, but be able to share that and also be able to uh, have the opportunity to marry that together with technology. And I think what we're doing here is an excellent opportunity for those that want to be included. Um, that oh, necessarily I think so, yeah. don't. Yes. So um, I, I just wanted to add that. So I just think that this would be a good form um, as well for that as well. Great. Great. Yes, I, I agree. And um, so so uh, if I could take a moment, this is the uh, this is the the program that they just announced um, the data science and department of music launch industry first collaboration. And um, it, it goes beyond um, just uh, uh, say, here's how you do the engineering pieces on the computer. This is more like the analytics, like what happens uh, after the music is, is done, where does it go? Um, let's see, music industry data analytics. And I just read this yesterday, so pardon me if I'm not really up on it, but um, let's see. Karen, can you share that link in the chat? Yeah. I like the store. I'd like to have that. Uh... But I know some of these people. I know Jake Herzog. I can walk up and find him. And uh, these are all musicians too, other than this Carl Schubert guy who is uh, in data science. Uh, but this really dovetails with what you're saying. Um, hang on. Get back to the chat. 
a second. Okay, so you should be able to get that now. Got it. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So, so at any rate, um, this is uh, interesting. This could be a, a place where we could find people to test things, possibly. So it's just some ideas and uh, uh, we have close connections there. So it might be interesting to find out what connections uh, Hyperledger Foundation has with the university's blockchain institute. You know, it could be that there's already a relationship there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. And I think it's fantastic that you have inroads to that. And I think that uh, we definitely could make use of that after we establish some, we start our journey in, with this roundtable. But that definitely is going to be a great asset to us. And you having those connections, Karen, is going to be really, really good. Um, we need people. This roundtable has to be populated by industry people in all the industries that we want to address. So we need AI. And we have AI here with you guys. We need blockchain. I have blockchain. I have experience. Uh, we need entertainment law. I have, I have access and connections in entertainment law. We need some everybody. We need film production. We need producers of film to be part of this round table. They can bring their issues. They don't have to have any technical experience at all, but they just have, have to have experience in film production, accounting. So film accounting and uh, you know payments, processes, we need to populate. So I'll start with Randy. If you could put in film accounting, film production, entertainment law, AI, blockchain, um, Karen, Nathan, any? Well, one thing I thought of is union. I would really like to know what the Writers Guild settled on with AI, because see, all those things are going to have to be tracked and traced. It would be interesting to be able to say, okay, here's the here's the recommend here's the um, the requirements based on what made them happy. This is what they settled with. So here, this is probably a reasonable list of requirements to build into a manifest. So that's kind of what we're looking for is requirements to build into that manifest. I agree with you. I mean, so does that mean that we 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 connect with the Writers Guild? I think uh, it would be and, a really good start. And we and we ask the Writers Guild if they'll give us some input on on you know what what protections do they think they have? So maybe we ask a, a representative of the Writers Guild to sit in the roundtable. That would be uh, that would be that would be an interesting start. Now, right now, today, you can't issue CP C2PA credentials for a PDF. And I don't know why they're holding back on that. They haven't done that yet. So it's all images. So, right. you know, with that, that might not be the best place to start. But I was just really curious as to what they settled on. Um, films right now, you can stamp them, anything. Uh, there's like it gives on the website um, what the. Let me share real quick, and I'll show you what the what we have to work with. So, um, under Randy, under film production, can you put uh, film editors? Editor, okay. Film editors, um, and under film accounting, can you put uh, production accountants? Um. Here's the, okay, I'll share this list. It's, uh, share screen. Okay, so right now, today, the supported formats, A, V, I, F, D, N, G, H, E, I, C, H, E, I, F, J, P, E, G, M, 4, A, M, P, 3, M, P, 4, P, N, G, S, V, G, T, I, F, W, A, V, W, A, V, P. So there's a lot of images and there's some motion, you know, MP4. Right, right, right. But it, yeah, so in film production. Sound. Yeah, in, that's what I'm going to ask. 
sound included in that? MP3, yep, MP3 yeah. and ways. So yeah. music is a good place to start too. Yeah, music will, music will be a great place to start. I mean, there are all kinds of issues in, in music. So music producers in that list, mm -hmm. Randy, um, uh, music agents, agents, both uh, actors, agents. So I guess that would be that would be the industry industry representatives. It would be a good uh, subject. Once we get this list nailed down, we then need to go out and find the people, and and we we have to formalize an introduction to the roundtable. So we're all using it the same way. We're all introducing the round table the same way. So between now and the next meeting we have, um, I would like to, with everybody, maybe by email or some informal method, propose the name of the group and write an introduction that we can go out into the industries, all these industries that we want to participate. And I'd like to see maybe up to 12 to 15 people on this round table. You know, I, in fact, uh, an odd number, just so that if there was a vote that needed to be taken, we could have a quorum. Brett, I, um, ahead, I thought of one other um, job type that I don't want to forget, AI, product, AI product manager for there any of the industries, any of the entertainment industries, games, and don't forget games. Games are really games important. Part of all this. Any well, we, of have, games. we have a gaming guy in our, in our MESIG who's not here today, uh, Sandy. So gaming, put gaming in there, Randy. And what, I'm sorry, Karen, you, you, what did you AI, say? AI product manager for any of the entertainment industries. Right. Okay. That would be a job title. I would think that we would look for an AI product manager. So like, who's, do they have one? That yeah. would be, so what I've been told is that everybody either has one or will. Music coder, music coders, coders that play music and music and coders that write music with code, electronic music in the group. Um, I think we should, uh, are all you guys, I, Karen and Ethan, are you on Telegram? I am, I think. I don't know okay. if I have. Ethan, are you on Telegram? Are you on? Uh... I am not, no. Okay. But I can be. Yeah, you want, if you, if you can be. I'm on it. Okay, if you can be. Uh, Randy, are you on Telegram? Yeah, I'm on Telegram. Okay. So we can create a group on Telegram here. And um, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you, or, um, actually, Karen, Karen Kilroy, are you under Karen Kilroy? Should be, yeah. Karen, nope, no results. So that's, and that's, or you know what, sorry, duh. <laughs> What's wrong? No, I, 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 here I am thinking you're in my group. You're not yeah, in my group. Karen Kilroy. Oh, no, you probably can't see it. Yeah. So what is, um, Okay, so give me see Ethan. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have Karen, I have your email, right? I, I will share this. Well, you know what we'll do? I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's start with this. Ethan, are you on LinkedIn? Ethan's on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Randy, you're on LinkedIn, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. So let's start a chat in LinkedIn, and I'll uh, I'll grab everything. 
and then uh, we'll start to compile this. Randy, you have some notes uh, yeah. that you can you can assemble it better than you've written them there about what we've talked mm -hmm. about today. Um, I'll put together a group on LinkedIn. Just we'll just you know jumpstart this for now. Uh, the next step here is we have to we have to formulate an invitation, formulate formally create this group, announce it once we have a name, then create an invitation to certain people. We address them and tr connect with them via LinkedIn, email, any way you guys see as being the most efficient way. Uh, and we try to pull together 15 industry reps and start this discussion about the 400 things that we, we have to talk about. So whether we then start meeting once a week or once every two weeks and pick a date or I, I'm not sure, but uh, definitely um, we could probably do a once every couple of weeks thing for half an hour, at least to get it started. Mm -hmm. You know, meet meet at a convenient time. I know Randy's in the West Coast uh, Pacific time. I'm in the East Coast Eastern time. You're mountain time. Ethan, are you mountain time? We're are you central. mountain We're both central. central time? Excuse mm -hmm. me, central. So so you're you're an hour back of me and Randy's three hours back of me. So we have to find it, which is always a difficult thing to do and going to be more difficult if you have 15 people to find that decent. So um, I'll, I'll continue the discussion here on LinkedIn. Uh, we could move it even to Discord if we want. Um, how are you with Discord, Karen and Ethan? Are you a fan of Discord? I mean, yep. I have it. You're shaking your head, mm. Karen. <laughs> you have, have, you're yeah, not a fan. I, I made myself a rule like a long time ago that <laughs> I wouldn't eat any new animals and I wouldn't I, try any new social media. <laughs> you know, I, I get it. I'm not I, a vegetarian. You know what? I, 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 I already had new animals. <laughs> I already had this discussion with Hyperledger at our chairs meeting the other day about how many. I mean, just how many social groups do people want to join to get information, mm -hmm. right? Which is why, yeah, just, which is why LinkedIn is so good, because mm -hmm. everybody's on LinkedIn, so it's not a. So let's start with. Uh, so I get it. I'm there, 100. Uh, <laughs> percent Let's start with. Uh, let's start with LinkedIn. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put, and um, Randy's gonna get some her notes together. Yeah, we'll formalize these notes and then we'll 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 start. We'll, we'll formulate a proper professional invitation. We'll vote on it, make sure it's good. And then uh, uh, we'll get it out. We'll start drawing people in and then talk to Karen and Ethan about the uh, the university and about where, where they can, or are they going to be down the road a little bit? Once we get established, do we go to them and start pulling them in? So. Karen, we, we, I also asked you about Bitcoin, if you remember our conversation, our private conversation. So I need to talk to you about that because okay. I completely forgot about it. But let's go. We'll do that. We'll do that outside of here. And um, um, but we'll, we'll get that sorted out for you. But it's one o'clock. Our meeting is over. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Ethan. Thank Randy, you. thank you. It was good. Thank a great you, discussion. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. We're, we're excited about <laughs> where we're you. going and uh, we'll see you all soon. Very soon. Yeah, thank you again. Soon. Good thank talking you to you so guys. Much, Karen and it's Ethan. Great. Ethan, thank, thank you. you. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank uh -huh, you, Brett. Thank you. Thanks, Randy.